Hi, welcome to GTS Distribution's Come and Play Day here in Seattle. My name is Rodney Smith from Watch It Played, and I'd like to invite you to join me as we take a look at one of the many games being featured here at this event. So let's go into the Watch It Played room and see what's on the table next. All right, everyone, welcome back again. I've been joined by Barry Pike of Victory Point Games, and you've brought a game with you. Yes. What, um, what is this game? I've brought Tenka. This yes. is our uh, best-selling card game. And uh, it's themed, as you can see, with all this beautiful artwork that one of our in-house artists has done um, in feudal Japan. I have a confession. Mm -hmm. uh, more for, for my viewers than for you. Last night, this was the one game I got a chance to demo. And I had, I had so I, I kind of know a little more going into this game than I have for a lot of the other games. Yeah. But I, we need to share this with them and let them know about it, right? So of course. So, so what's we got the theme, okay? So what's what's the objective here? What are, what are the players trying to do? What are they trying to accomplish? Okay. So each player is really trying to become basically the next emperor of Japan. Okay. Because right now it's in chaos, you know, and so you have this uh, chance of um, social collapse. Mm -hmm. And so when you become emperor, your goal is to you know, try to prevent that. We've got a lot of cards here. We've got these, these boards. How, did, how does this all work come together? Okay, so it's basically you draw a card from the draw stack. Yes. And then you get to play a card from your hand. Okay. And so when you play a card, you can do two things with it. You can pitch it into the discard pile and then use its pitch ability. So each card's got that listed on there. Right. Or you can place it. And so when you place it, you place it into your court. Okay. So each player's got one of these boards that tells you where the different cards go and organize. You know? Right. This is how you kind of build up your little area. And I, I, we kind of skipped over this, but how many people can play? We sort of set up here as if it's two player, but the game can play up to... It, it plays up to four, and there's an optional rule for fifth player. Okay. So it's really designed for four. Yes. And, yeah. and you would start with a, with a hand of cards when you're drawing, right? Yes. You yeah. start with a hand of eight cards, okay. and then you go from there. So looking at, at the court again, remember you said we could pitch mm -hmm. to get its effect, or we could place and put it here. Yeah. Now, my understanding is that the pitch powers, they're a little more potent, they're a little more powerful, Yes. but yes. you're throwing the card away. That's exactly right? it. It's going a one use. It's a one use kind of thing. So you get to pitch the card, like you said, you discard it, yeah. so you lose the card, um, but it is usually a much more powerful ability, so okay. it allows you to, to uh, hurt other players more, much more effectively. More directly. So, yeah. But then, if you place it, like we have some cards already started here where we've been placing them, these are going to give kind of passive ongoing effects potentially or things you can use, right? That's exactly it. For, okay. For instance, yes. our priests here, say this player has the most of these guys in their court. Okay. Now, with you, when you read their place ability, um, what that allows you to do is, you know how you normally draw one card and right. you put that into hand. But now that you have the most priests, that allows you to draw two. And, and you so get to keep you, both. You get to keep both. Okay. That seems pretty powerful. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> okay. It's a great ability. So, so what about, what we get down here? Provinces, right? These are province cards? Yeah, the province cards. So what these guys allow you to do is, one, the big thing is they allow you to win the game. So that's a big ah, part of it. okay. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is, is when you draw the cards, they allow you to draw a, an additional card for each province that you have. Yes. Now, it's not that you get to keep those. You still only get to keep one in the sense of, you know, your traditional turn, yeah. but it allows you more choices. So you get to kind of filter through the deck and get the, the prime card. So with this one province, I get to draw an additional card, but then I have to throw one back, right? Correct, okay. yes. So if I had two provinces, I could draw two cards, put two back. Two back, back. exactly. Okay, I get it, yeah, right. And you were saying th this helps you win the game. Well, we didn't talk about how you win the game, so no. let's talk about that now for a second. Okay, so there's actually two different ways to win this one. Right. One is, like I said, the, the provinces here. So if you're the player with the most provinces at the beginning of your turn, but have at least as many as there are as where the pagoda is currently sitting, okay. then you'll win. Right, which starts at five, right? It starts so, at five, yes. Okay. So if it comes around to my turn and I have five mm -hmm. provinces and nobody else has, say so everyone else has four or less, mm -hmm. I won. You, you win at the beginning okay. of your turn. Okay. So the second way that you can actually win the game is by putting these three regalia cards into your court. So and that's an instant win. So you don't have to wait until the beginning of your turn. So these guys are really powerful. So I get the third one of that set, and I'm done. Is it only it. these three cards in the deck? Only those three. The, the whole deck. Those okay. are the only three in the deck. Okay, I got it. So right now, I, I kind of get a sense. Of, is there actually some direct interaction here? Where uh, I, extremely this this game. <laughs> I know is, the answer to this yes. question because this is the only strategy I employed <laughs> for the longest time in the game. <laughs> attack, attack, attack. Yeah, I mean, you had the knights lined up. Yes. You were ready to go. Well, that is, and that's the knights, right? So, yes. so how do these guys work? What do I? What if I want to attack somebody? What do I do here? Okay, so like I said, one of the options that you have is attacking someone. And so what you do is you basically count the number of knights you have mm -hmm. and you compare it. Say this is the person being attacked. Sure. Um, you compare it to how many knights they have. 
So each knight counts as like a battle point. Okay. So this this court has two battle two points. points. Yeah. And these guys have one. Right. So it's a two to one. So currently the attacker is winning. Right. Yeah. And I have the option. I remember at the start of my turn, if I have a knight in my hand, mm -hmm. I can pitch it at that point in time. Correct. Right. And this gives me a plus two. Yes. And the best part is you don't have to necessarily pitch it from your hand. You can also pitch it from your court. Right. So I can say oh, I want to hang on to this. So instead. I've got my two points here, or mm -hmm. I can pitch this and it becomes worth two. So now I've got yeah. two and three. I am yeah. going to lose this at the end of Yeah, that's that. the downside, is that yeah. you do pitch it, so it does get discarded. Right. But if I think I need that to boost the attack, then I can Yeah, sometimes it's necessary. Let's say I do that. So if I have my four total points here, mm -hmm. now my poor defender here has got he's, only one point. He's in trouble. Yeah. Now, the thing is, before the battle is actually completed, yes. you go around the table mm -hmm. and you ask other people if they want to contribute. So. The defender goes last in that case, so he's always the last person to make the choice on whether or not he wants to pitch a knight to add to his total. So going clockwise around the table, each player goes, oh, I'm going to go help the attacker by pitching a knight, or help the defender by right. pitching a knight. Right. And once again, they can pitch from their cord or from their hand. Yeah, let's say that there's no friendly people at the table. They let things yeah. sort of sit where they are. <laughs> I've got four, you've got one. Yeah. We look at the difference, right? That's a difference of three. Now, how do you resolve that loss? Okay, so the defender in that case lost by yeah. three, like you said. And so what they'd have to do is out of their hand, they have to discard, or not discard, they call them casualties. Yes. And so you put them in a pile off to the side, and so three of those. Okay. And then the attacker has the option of taking spoils by taking this is the them. Like, yeah, this yeah. Is, yeah, this is what you employed a <laughs> yeah, lot of. Yes, yes. <laughs> is you get to pick up those cards and you go, ooh, I like this one, and you put that into your hand. Right. Now, the other option is the attacker says, oh, I don't really like any of those cards. Yeah, yeah. Now, if the defender had a province, say, then he could go and conquer that province. Right. And you take that province, and instead of putting it in hand, you put it right into your own court. Right, right. So now instead of having just the one province, I have two on my way to getting the five that I need. Exactly. Right. It puts you closer to victory. Now, the other thing about this game I thought was interesting is you've got this back and forth, but the game has a little bit of a clock going on here, right, to time yes. it down. Because we're going to run through this deck, and then what happens if that happens? So, yeah, there is a timing mechanism. Uh, basically, what happens is if this deck is ever depleted and yes. all in the discard, and you have to draw an additional card, and there's nothing there, mm. we go into chaos. Okay, it yeah. sounds bad. Yeah, it's, it's real bad. It's <laughs> okay. not something that you want to happen. Right. Well, it, it's a strategy. It could be good for you. It depends how things are going. Okay. Um, so what happens first off is we move this guy down one. So now everyone has to have one less in order to win the game. Makes it a little promises. easier to get to that objective. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. The next thing that happens is that each player has to discard a card from their court. And that's to represent the cast that's happening even in your own court, and so you're losing people. Yeah, I remember this, this happening. It was really, like, I was on a pretty good track, and then when this chaos happened, all my cards were good. I really needed all of them, I felt. Yeah. So then I was forced, like, what do I get rid of here, right? So yeah, the chaos does, definitely has an impact there. So after everyone's removed, then what we do is we take the discard pile, reshuffle it, and yes. give it a couple, yes. and then put it back in the draw and start it all over again. Now, the kicker is, is that the game is going to go a lot faster as you go along because you're going to get more and more court, uh, cards in your court. Yes. And so this pile is going to get smaller and smaller as you go through the game. More so quickly, this is, yeah. Yes, right. It's like you're leaving here and they're coming out into each person's exactly. court. Exactly. Yeah. And it's going to get easier to win as this gets bumped down. Suddenly having two provinces... Is definitely a viable, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm, I'm in the contention. And it keeps the game, I guess, from going, uh, you know, inordinately long, right? You oh, yeah, there's a timer definitely. on the thing, right? Mm -hmm. And one thing we didn't mention, I know we kind of skimmed over this because, well, we don't want to burden you too much with all the different things, but there are <laughs> other, there's other cards in here. There's purple cards, right? These are special yes. cards with special powers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got uh, 25 unique cards that are the purple ones, and each of those are that kind of card that you throw out and no one expects it. You're like, oh, I'm going to trade hands with you. Well, so much for your strategy of right. collecting a whole bunch of provinces or <laughs> yes, you know yes. things of that nature. They add a nice little fun surprise mix to the whole yeah, thing, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. So yeah, each game you only use half of them though. So that's what makes it really neat is that uh, each game that you play will be completely unique and right. fresh. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, if, if someone is interested by what they see here and they want to find out more about the game, where, where should they go? Uh, they should go to victorypointgames.com. Yeah. VictoryPointGames.com. <laughs> yes, excellent. And, and of course, they can find this plus a plus very yeah, large all of other of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, you can also find it. We're getting into stores now, so your friendly local game store. We can do that. Excellent. Yeah. Definitely. Listen, Barry, thank you so much for taking the time to show me this. I had a lot of fun. I don't mind saying it. A lot of fun playing this <laughs> and, and trying to fight my way to victory. It ended in a draw. So Indeed. I consider that a moral victory that I didn't lose my first time. So <laughs> thanks again. Yes, thank you for having me. And thank all of you for watching.